Let's talk about the Giant Loop RTW, those are the round the world luggage system. I'm here in South Africa, I'm just getting ready to jump on the plane. I've been scouting out for a tour for 2022 and this was the bag choice I picked for it. If I sound overwhelmingly positive during most of my reviews, it's because I choose products based on performance and what I need for that specific mission. It turns out I have virtually no loyalty to any brand, any specific product. I look for what works best for me and I'm going to show you if this is the best product for you. Let me tell you about these bags. These are made in the US, so they are a little bit pricey. They're definitely up there with all the other premium bags price-wise. Uh, if you're a U.S. person and you want U.S. made, this is a product uh, that you want to keep in mind there. Now these are 45 liters. They are huge. And one of the things I really like about Giant Loop and these bags is that when you look at these bags, first of all, they come off really easy, but the outer pockets are stitched and built into the bags. And a lot of bag systems now, what they do is that you buy the luggage and then you have to buy additional pouches or create more space. And that really starts pushing the price up. And if you're pricing luggage out, you need to look at what's the final price. What is it once everything's on it? The main reason I bought these bags is they weigh almost nothing. They are the lightest pannier I can find out there and they have huge amount of capacity. Here on the trip, I was carrying my sleeping bag, my backpack, I was carrying all of my gear, all my clothing, cold weather gear, rain gear, and if you've watched the recent packing video, yes, I had tools and an air pump and rescue items. Those were all in the back right pouch. It's the only pouch I didn't talk about when we did that video, but I had all of it and it fit in here. Again, a lot of capacity, a lot of space. These in comparison, if you've watched my channel, you know I'm a, a fan of Moscow Moto bags. You know that I'm currently using the Lone Rider stuff. So why did I switch over and why did I use Giant Loop for this trip? And it had to do with the weight. These are half the weight of my Giant Loop panniers. And when I put my luggage on the plane, I run out of space and I run out of weight. And this allowed me to keep that weight down low. The way they keep their weight low, you'll notice these really don't have a ton of shape. They kind of squish down and that means because they're shaving everything down to it this is really a minimalist bag so if you want no weight on the bike but they lose some of that shape and if you have this half full of stuff it kind of moves and bumps around but they do have a strap or this flap here that comes across the bottom over the side bag or the dry bag and then they have a flap that comes from the top and you can cinch this up and that way it holds everything in and tight to the bike. And that's their, that's the report to that. So once I lock this into place, yeah, of course I make it look difficult now. There we go. But once I do that, you can see that it kind of holds everything up in. On the packing video, I complained about the straps dangling off the side. My solution was simply to take the strap, twist it around, tuck it into the elastic and then tuck it into the pocket. And that's made a, a much cleaner solution. When I was riding through the bush and the thorns and everything else, it would grab the straps even if I had them tucked up and just pull them out and then they were just flapping around. It looked really dorky, I didn't like it. Another thing I didn't like about these bags when I was out in the bush, I have a dry bag in the back, as I mentioned, and one side was all of my rain gear, my foul weather gear, the other side was all my tools and, and everything else, so I had quick access to those items. But on the front, the front pocket, if you come in here and take a look, you'll see it's got this elastic strap so you can cinch it down, but it's an open pocket. In the very bottom, they've got some drain holes, so if you get water and rain in here, it'll drain all the water out. But when I put my shoes in here, when I put my water in here, and when I cinch it up, if it rains, it's wet, but worse yet, when I was in the bush, I pulled out my shoes and they were just covered in thorns and pricklies and dust and filth and everything else. One option is to take the bag, pop it off, flip it around and put it on the other side so that open pouch is in the back. 
But from a security standpoint, I like it to the front. Also, I, I put water in there, so it's easy to grab my water, pull it out, and use it. So I do like that to the front. I would love to see them put a flap on the front of that. It's just something to consider if you choose to go with this system. Some of the other ways they shaved weight and made this very adaptable is this back aluminum plate, which is their quick connect plate. And it has these slots in it. So these little brackets here that sit on the lower rail can be adjusted even if your oval rack isn't standard. And that you can adapt it if you're traveling, if you know that your other, the bike you're going to has an oval rail or, or one of those rectangles uh, racks like this one, then you know you can adapt it. And that's kind of a big deal if you're renting, buying, or, or getting a bike local. Also, on the back side of this, on the inside of the bag, is just a thin piece of plastic. It's a very, very thin, and that gives it some shape and something to bolt to, and that keeps the weight down. What I don't like about that, it's so thin that when I have a heavy load in this, I did notice that I started getting just a little bit of bowing and, and bending just right here at the edges as all the weight was pulling down on it. So you can just kind of see here, there's a little bit of flex. And I don't know in really hot temperatures, if I was traveling for months on end, heavy weight, hot temperatures, I imagine that would probably permanently deform. I don't think it would be a functional issue, but it certainly would be something noticeable. The material is relatively thin. That's how they keep the weight down. Again, long term, I don't know what the durability is. I did throw it down on the ground a couple times just we were shooting some videos doing some training doing some camping and just trying to see how these things hold up and i did as much as i could in the, the just under a month that i've been here and they've held up quite well but i don't have a long term i can't tell you how they're going to last a year or two years from now speaking of adaptability i mentioned you can adapt these to the frames ktm in all of their in all of their um I'm, I'm, I don't know how to say it without sounding really bad. So I'm just going to say what KTM did is when they did their rack on the right side, it's not actually flat. It curves in and that way they can make their, their bags fit and it's only proprietary. Even though this wasn't totally flat, because the plate here fits to the inside, I was still able to make the inside fit. And once it clamped down and I had everything adjusted, I was still even, even on this rack system, I was able to get to lock in and stay safe there. From a security standpoint, they do have a lock on this quick release here, and it's just a little barrel lock. That way you can always lock it down. It's on this side over here, you can see that. So it's just a really small barrel lock that locks it into place. So when you're, somebody, nobody can walk by and just snag your bags, but you, don't have a way to lock the bag itself. There's no locking bars. There's no way to secure your stuff on the inside. The only way you're gonna maintain security on this is keep your eye on it or just take it with you. Although it's so easy to take off the bike, that's not really a big deal. Again, 45 liters. These things are huge. I didn't have to bring a top bag. I don't run with a tank bag. I don't like the way it interferes with, uh, with my riding off-road. And that became important. I do like the fact that these are long and relatively narrow. To get the capacity, they didn't push the bags out wide. And that becomes important here. And if you're in North America, it's only California, but most of the world and here in South Africa, lane splitting and lane sharing is really common. And the wider you get, the less you're able to use that as a strategy to move through traffic, both for safety, but also just for convenience. And having these be relatively narrow, that was a win on it. Do I like the bags? The answer is yes. But I am leaving him behind here in South Africa. John from Thule Adventures, that's the, the individual and the, the group that I'm working with to put the tour together for 2022. I'm going to leave these bags with this bike because this was his personal bike and he loaned it to me to use while I was here. So that's my thank you to leave him behind and that's why I'm not taking it back with me. If you're looking for a bag that you want to have as little weight as possible and as much space as possible, you definitely need to check these out. 
They're a win from what I used. I was really happy. It's the first time I've put Giant Loop to use and I, they have a really great product. And especially, again, size, weight. If you're a minimalist, this just might be your bag system. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit subscribe. Leave some comments down below. If you have anything, if I missed anything, I'll certainly answer those after this post up. Ride safe. Remember, smile while you ride because attitude matters. Yay, you got new bags. <laughs>